are days that God uses who we are and how we are to bring about a spiritual truth that we might not know or experience any other way except that He does it to us. Because when we try to do it ourselves, often pride enters in. The best way that I know to humble yourself is to let God humble you, because not only can He, He will He, He will He, He will if you let Him, even as He did in my speech. But we are told to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, and He would lift us up, because it is the nature of man to puff himself up, to make, him out, make himself out to be something more than he is, to really try to be oh, some kind of demigod or superstar or hey you know I am the athlete I got my pecs I got my rex <laughs> you know I have my toys I have my man cave and I'm a man I think you're a Neanderthal if you got a cave <laughs> but God will bring you down that he can lift you up. God will take you to a place that's uncomfortable so that you could be humble and allow you to go through some sometimes pretty drastic baselets in order to bring about a lifting up of your face and your countenance so that he could be glorified in what he's done for you as opposed to what you've done to yourself. I know when I started to record this, it was humorous because I came out here and I sat down and I said, well, Lord, you know, we're going to talk about humility. And, you know, I was like, cool. You know, we'll talk about humility. And I kind of looked around and I looked at the camera and I looked out there and kind of like daydreamed for a few minutes and thought about how self-esteem and all the gurus of today want to make you into puffed up and bigger and stronger and all these other things. And the Lord might say, I want you to be lesser and not so noble and not so wise and not so self-confident and not so strong, but rather poor in spirit. And as I was doing that, I kind of went, and nothing came out. <laughs> the Lord humbled me. And you know, that's a good thing. Because until you've made a fool of yourself, or at least you think you were a fool, you really don't understand the whole concept of humbling yourself. But if in that humility you can touch another soul, reach another life, have, as it were, a connection with someone that you might not normally talk to, then it would be a good thing for you to learn to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord so He can lift you up in due season. Speaking of which, Haley Light, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Everyone, uh-oh, everyone, I don't like the everyone's. Now, wait a minute. I'm not an everyone. I'm a someone. Aren't you? Are you an everyone? Maybe yes, maybe no. I tell my wife I'm not. I tell my husband I'm not. My husband? I tell my husband I'm not. <laughs> but are you everyone? I mean, really. If it says everyone, is it everyone? Is it everyone or just someone? Or someone that is like proud in heart? Or everyone? Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. You see, when you're proud, when you've got a high self-esteem, when you've got the Donald Trump, Tony Robbins, whatever, you know, thing going for you, you know, yeah, yeah, man, I compliment you, you compliment me. We network and we will see that we are the best that we can be because we are what we be. No! Just because somebody joins your hand and shakes it and says, Yes, 
you are the best that you can be. Or some Christian ministers, God knows if they're doing their, your will, Lord, okay. But if they're only saying, yeah, 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 you're the best that God wants you to be, and yeah, 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 God bless you, and yeah, 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 God doesn't have anything bad for you, yeah, 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 yeah. I think they're like, yeah, yeah, yo-yos. <laughs> I mean, up and down and up and down and up and down. They got nothing but. Yes, I think that God is only going to bless you. Uh, I've got a word for you. It's only blessings. No. Humble yourself. Be humble. Get down. Get low. Get real. Wash some feet, man. <laughs> Go do a gospel mission like where the poor people are. O oh Lord, Thou art our Father. Really? We are the clay, Thou art the potter, and we are the work of Your hand. Be not wroth, or very sore, O oh Lord, neither remember iniquity forever. Behold, see, we beseech You, we are Your people. No, God. When I'm full of pride, don't remind me of my sin. Don't remind me of what I did again. Don't keep reminding me, Lord, every time that I think I'm something special, just what it is that brought me to the realization that when I'm behind closed doors, nobody but you sees me and sees what I'm doing there. Hmm. Maybe pride isn't such a good thing. Hmm, I don't know, maybe my self-esteem needs some pride, maybe I need to love myself first so I can love others. Why not? Thou hast chastened me, and I was chastised, as a bull unaccustomed to the yoke. Turn to me, O God, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after I was turned by you, I repented, and after that I was instructed. I smote upon my thigh. I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Affliction comes not forth of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground. Yet man is born into tr unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. You see, it isn't so much that it's just about humility, but it's that God knows you. He knows you. Leave you alone five minutes, you'll sin. Okay, leave you alone ten minutes, you'll sin again. Leave you alone fifteen minutes, and you'll sin again. But... The soul that sins shall surely die. True. But you see, it's a process of God bringing you out of the mud, and the blood, and the guck, and the yuck, and changing your mind so that you don't choose to be involved in those things that take you outside of the protection of God. Because God goes like this, hey, I got you covered, man. Just walk with me. I got you covered. Oops. Wait a minute. The Lord's over there. And I'm right here. But I'm looking up, but the Lord's over there. So, if I'm looking up, am I still protected? Ah. So the Lord's covering moves sometimes, and I need to move with Him. I need to go forth. I need to go there. Or I need to go here. Or I need to be turned from the left to the right or in your camera from the right to the left see how that perspective changes on my right and left it's different than your left and right isn't it you mean perspective has a lot to do with it you see God is looking down on you and he wants to lift you up. So if you humble yourself, guess what? He brings you up to where he is. 
So you see, humility is going to be accomplished one way or the other, because we're either going to be turned, as we read in the scripture, so that you'll do what is right because he's chastising you, or you'll try to hide it. You'll try to think that you're something you're not. You'll try to think you're perfect. And guess what? It ain't going to work. No, it ain't. It ain't going to happen. It doesn't work for me. And believe me, I know. Man, after yesterday's blessing, by nightfall, it was the fall and night. <laughs> Man, I came crashing down and hit the floor. And my nose hurts. But the Lord lifted me up and said, Boo? No, <laughs> he doesn't say that. He said, Try, try again. <laughs> Yea, hath God said? Hmm. When the tempter came to Jesus, he said, If thou be the Son of God, and Jesus said unto him, It is written. It is written. Then the devil left him. I may not return with thee, for it is said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water here. He said unto him, I am a prophet also, as you are. And an angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with you into your house, so he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him. The man of God was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion, which has torn him and slain him, according to the word of the Lord. Ouch. You know, sadly, it brings me to a serious topic. And I like to be goofy, and I like to be carried away, and I like to be every other way except for the one thing that God wants me to do today. And that's to tell you that there are false prophets out there that are there, God sent. God allowed and God uses for his own purposes. They're to try you and they're to test you. In humility, you may have thought that you could get away with you know, chastising a president that you don't like, contradicting a man of God that may be teaching the word of God that you don't like the way he's doing it, and you get to choose that authority and to bitterly and angrily write things about them and lie about them, tell untruths about them, or even think you're doing righteously. But God did not tell you to do it, did he? Because you see, there is a place and a time for when God does bring every one of us to total honor. He's going to bring every one of us into a reality check where if you are a prophet, you say, of the Lord Most High, then God is going to bring you into a contradiction of yourself that we do either do the word of the Lord or will you contradict yourself by not doing what the scripture says, not doing what God says, not doing as he has told you. I read every day on the internet, constantly, people that say, and they give some word from the Lord. And I know it's not. And they know it's not. But for them, they put all the power of what their persuasion is into it. And people blow them up and pat them on the back and shake their hands and say, oh, thank you, I claim that, name that, and name that word into being so that it can be a part of me because I'm not sure if God said it, you know, because I'm not that close to God, but I am close to you as a prophet, so, you know, if that's God's word for me, then I'm going to take it from you rather than go direct. You see, in these latter days, even today, as I'm sitting here, I know that there are people that have put their stock and trade that tomorrow they believe they're going to be raptured. They have so wrapped up their emotion and devotion of certain Jewish feasts, which tomorrow is Rosh Hashanah. We call the, it's really called the sounding of the shofar that you're required to hear the sound of the shofar being blast. It was to give warning. But the Feast of Trumpets, the feast that God said that there was a challenge because it's kind of like one or two days, you know, you really don't know which day it is because you really have to go out and you have to see whether or not the stars are coming out and it's ahead of the months and it's ahead of the year. Everybody gets all these wrapped up 
emotional ideas about what is a traditional Jewish example of celebrating something that God wrote in Scripture and will be fulfilled. Don't get me wrong. God will fulfill His prophecy exactly to the minute, to the hour, to the day, to the week, to the month, to the year, to the season of His timing and fulfillment that it accomplishes what He wants perfectly. But it does not accomplish what people want prophetically by saying that it's going to occur when it's not. Because what they do is they become a false prophet for that. And as I have said that I am a prophet of no, I have told people, look, you know, you got to add the rest of the scriptures to it. You can't just go on one scripture and say, you know, hey, tomorrow we're going to get raptured, you know, we're going home, you know, it's going to be bye-bye time, you know, and we're going whoop de do and see you through. No, I'm sorry. The saddest day will be tomorrow when it doesn't happen for them. Because then they begin to offer excuses. They begin to change the word of God. They begin to develop into what is called compromise. And whenever you do that, whenever you take your feelings rather than the fact of Jesus talking to you through his word, through the scriptures, but likewise in your personal relationship, then you're going into an area that is going to deceive yourself. Because it's not God sent deception to you. It isn't that Satan deceived you. You took your own ideas and you deceived yourself. So for a false prophet, you know, for the false teacher, for the false prophetic idea that tomorrow is the day that the Lord will come in the clouds and call you, sound the shofar, and you'll whisk away, or that you're going to fast and pray for all these ten days, you know, during Kishri, during the celebration of the Feast of the Lord, that these holy days that God has set aside for himself, the times and the seasons, that he said he would fulfill in his time and in his way, I can only say, don't lose your relationship with God. Don't value your personal dynamic with God so cheaply that you sell it at the expense of the Word of God, the Scriptures. Because the Bible, as the Holy Spirit has given it to you, was meant to instruct you, to teach you, to allow you to reprogram your mind so that you're not consumed by this super Jew idea or this super Judaism thing or this whole idea that, oh, God's plan for me is to be grafted in, you know, to the Jewish culture so that I could become a wannabe Jew. Before there was Judaism, before there was the Jew, there was the people of God. And after there is Judaism, and after there is the Jew and the Gentile, there will be the people of God. Because if you walk with God, and if you talk with God, and as God is making you into the image of His Son, you are becoming a son of God. Nobody calls Jesus a Jew in heaven. They call Jesus the Son of God. That's just the way it is. So, as much as I don't want to dwell on and focus in on you know, a negative aspect when I'm talking about devotion, especially to Jesus, and he's sitting right here in the midst of us, it is so sad to see how people can fall into that same place that that prophet was in 1 Kings 13, 16 through 19 and 26. Though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. The seriousness of how much people have put their stock and trade into this day, tomorrow, that's going to happen, and now they're promoting it today and pushing it beyond measure, stretching it beyond what it was meant to be, then that causes us, by way of the Holy Spirit, to have to say these things to them. The Word of God is your guide. Jesus Himself is your teacher. The Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus to you. It is not 
for your private interpretation, that you can take a portion of scripture and make it into something by adding all these circumstances you think are going to fit, whether it be the comet Elenin, which has dissolved itself, only parts of it remain, whether you think it's some gravitational force that's going to happen when they've proven there's no gravity from Elenin, whether it be some fictitious Nibiru idea that there is no Nibiru, there's no such a thing. Whether it be the asteroid that's flying by, you know, and you go, that asteroid's going to suddenly shift course. Whether it be earthquakes, or whether it be all these things, when the Lord said, look, you know, the storms came and the earthquake came and, you know, the Lord wasn't in them. But after they had gone by, then in a still small voice, the Lord spoke. Can I give you a word, please? If you were caught up today, right now, in this whole idea that today in year 2011, I think that's this year, <laughs> show you how much I pay attention, right before Rosh Hashanah 5771, that the first of Tishri you really think you really have gotten carried away into making plans to escape or to run away or to hide or to do something other than what God has told you to do, your pants. For God's sakes, and the people's sake more than anything else, repent before you deceive yourself to walk away from God. Because it should not be a matter of you have your faith wrapped up in the one day, but you have your faith constant in the one person. And He can lead you. Because after this day has gone by, after it hasn't happened like you thought, don't go to your own thinking. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him. He'll direct your path. And if you are lost in that, if somehow you have begun to fall away from Jesus in some way because of this day, contact me. Really, I'm serious. Mr. Net Business at gmail.com. If you can't find me on the internet, Facebook, go to that. Do, and I will respond to you, and I will share with you, and I will show you where or what or how you just simply took it one step too far. How it doesn't happen this year. It will happen someday soon. We are living in the last generation. You're right about that. But you're wrong in setting a date and time that you did not know was not going to fulfill this year, this day, this time, this season, this minute, or this hour. I'm sorry. I am bursting your bubble. I am telling you a fact. And if we preach any other gospel than Jesus Christ, even if I did, or I told you any other way to go, then I would say, for God's sakes, go do what the Lord is telling you to do. Whatsoever the Lord tells you to do, that you should do. But if you're wrong, if you failed in your own expectation because you put it in the day and not the person, then please, don't lose the person for the sake of the day. It's all about Jesus. It's not about your way. It's not about your will. It is about our God. And He is a Father. And He does love you. And because He loves you, He not only died for your sins, He died for your failed expectations and your predictions. He died for the fact that you made a mistake. He died because He knew you would do this. And because you have, He is willing to say to you, I still love you. I am always with you, even unto the end of the age. Be not deceived, be not dismayed. For if they say there is the Christ, don't go there. Or they say there is the false Messiah, don't go there. But rather, come to me. Come to me. Alone and broken and humble. Because I allow this to happen. And you would be humble that you would be made ready, that you would be made perfect, because I am the potter, and I will lift you up like clay, and I will hold you and fashion you in my hands, so you will be the vessel of honor. For I am not forsaken you, and I will give you my spirit continually, even though you may have gone astray with your feelings about my spirit. Don't go without God today. Don't be deceived in your way. Read the Word of God and walk with Him today. Because if you do trust in the Lord with all your heart, meaning not in your own understanding, 
in all your ways acknowledge him and he is directing your path, you're not going to fall into the trap of thinking that the rapture is today. You won't. You can't. The scriptures don't say it. It will not be fulfilled this year. I'm sorry. It won't. But rather, go to the Lord your God and do it doesn't matter if he tells you or you think you've done it wrong. Do what he tells you to do. And if it's wrong, he'll show you. He'll show you why you were wrong. Maybe just to be humbled. Maybe just to be brought to a place like that prophet, but without dying. To be brought to a place of only doing those things that God is telling you to do. When you follow Jesus, he's going to put you someday in the same place. same place he tells me today, in being a prophet of note. He's going to tell me to tell you, no, Jesus is not coming today. He is coming soon. But this is not the day. But this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice in be glad because he's allowed you to go through with your thoughts. So follow Jesus today. I wish I could laugh about this because it is so serious that some people do walk away. Don't forsake the Lord your God. Return to Him. Turn again unto the Lord. And let Him lift you up. Whatever it takes. If it's contact me or contact the Lord or contact a friend or or change your name, or hide, or whatever it may be. Just don't give up on Jesus. He didn't mislead you. He did not. He did not deceive you. But He will bless you if you humble yourself. 